I welcome you to welcome you again. As you know that we have been talking about the food requirement in the liver disease, especially in chronic liver disease, and we have covered the requirement of proteins, fats, uh, proteins and carbohydrates and requirement of fluids and salt in case of chronic liver disease. Now today we want to cover the, how much is the requirement of fat in the liver disease patients. So I welcome you and I have got with me, you can please introduce yourself. Can you speak loudly? But you have to speak very loudly. Okay. Uh, my name is Cordelia. Yes, I'm you. from Batch 33, uh, Group H2, from Malata Manipa Medical College. Yes. Uh, loudly. Name, my name is Anissa, and I'm from uh, Batch 33, Group H2, uh, from Malata Manipa Medical College. Okay, so welcome you. And uh, today we'll be speaking about the requirement of the fat in chronic liver disease. So who will be speaking first? Gajila or Anissa? I'll be talking about the normal uh, fat intake in normal okay, disease. So you can say disease. something what, what, what you wish to say. Okay. But speak loudly. Uh, okay. For fat, it is, uh, it is a important component of food that we require every day. Mm -hmm. Because uh, fat will, will be broken down in liver mm -hmm. and it will contribute for, to energy. But, uh, vitamins and also essential uh, fatty acids. So that's why we need fat in our daily life. Yes. But um, the ideal daily fat intake is only 20 to 30 percent of uh, uh, normal calorie intake. Okay. The okay. Some, some say here that it is uh, 20 to 25 oh, okay. grams grams per day. But there is little variation in the books that shouldn't be problem. Okay. Okay. So. Um, so I mean like in each one gram of fat it provides for like nine kilocalories of energy. One gram of uh, one gram of fat. Yeah, one gram of fat it provides nine kilocalories of yes. energy. Okay, so um do you want the example of cooking? Oh you can give no problem. Oh, you are okay. free to you can okay. see anything. <laughs> Alright, okay. Um let's say an example. For a person the daily requirement for calorie intake is like uh, two thousand five hundred calories per day. Yes. So um, okay, because we need 20 to 50 percent, or in your case 20 to 25 percent, mm -hmm. so we take 20 to 25 percent of that 2,500 calories, mm -hmm. and then uh, and then after that we divide it by nine, uh, because like uh, one gram equals to 90 yeah. calories. Okay, so um, in in the case in the person we who requires 2,500 uh, calories per day, mm -hmm. they need 55 to 83 grams of fat per day. 55 to 83 grams of fat yeah. per day. Yeah. That the patient should be, how much should be the weight of the patient? The weight of the patient, oh I'm not so sure. Okay. Okay. So we take, no, no, normally we can take 50 uh, kgs or 70 kgs of weight. So we can give this much of yeah. the fat. Uh, okay. And then for, about, about for uh, like, the chronic liver disease station yeah. because um, we have to see the cause of the chronic liver disease. Yeah. If it's like alcoholic, uh, if it's uh, alcohol liver disease, then um, it is better if the patient takes more saturated fats because mm -hmm. uh, the saturated fats it contains medium chain triglycerides, which is uh, which is better in uh, alcoholic liver disease patient. And for the non-alcoholic liver patient, um, they need more polyunsaturated fat. Polyunsaturated fat uh, yeah, poly for patients with non-alcoholic liver disease. Non yeah. uh, they need more omega-3 such as fish, you know, because mm -hmm. like um, in a non-alcoholic liver disease patient, they have more omega-6 and low omega-3. So we have to provide more omega-3. So any any sort of any sort of the, you see we got we got lot of fats oils available in the ma market. Uh, uh, will you recommend any particular particular oils? In Malaysia we got palm oil, isn't it? Yes. We all know that we got a work taking palm oil. The palm oil is not good. You understand? 
we should not recommend the palm oil they say the people who are who take palm oil their cholesterol rises very high and there are so many studies in which they found that that the palm oil is not good in case of chronic liver diseases so we must choose some oils we can choose the vegetable oils the vegetable among the vegetable oils the commonly we see is that canola is there or sunflower is there but better than those oils the better than better than the sunflower and canola oil the better is olive oil the olive oil is considered to be the best and better than olive oil is coconut oil so if we consume the coconut oil or olive oil then it is very much uh, very much suitable for patients having the long standing liver disease yes anything else you would like to say that is this is all um she can give the examples of yeah she can give yeah, she can give the examples so basically she's talking about saturated and unsaturated uh, fats just yeah. now so i'm just going to give an example of these two so saturated fat would, would be pretty predominantly from animal sources mm -hmm. and then unsaturated is from vegetable sources mm -hmm. just like what sir yeah. said just now um saturated examples is cocoa butter mm -hmm. and then palm oil and then some plant based oils as for unsaturated which is the better fat mm -hmm. it can come from oil oily fish nuts and seeds and even olive oil yes there is a common belief they say that they say that if somebody has to somebody has to take the take the oil the best source is the healthy source is also the nuts you are taking nuts for example you take walnuts or you take almonds or you take other kind of nuts they also provide the good source and it's a natural source very natural source and they have found that it is quite healthy um, it, it it does not cause uh, it does not cause dyslipidemia it does not cause uh, the diseases like fat, fatty liver so that is why they recommend these 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 uh, seeds these seeds or nuts they recommend for this thing but as i said that if that is not possible then we can take the coconut oil or the olive oil and one thing we must remember here, here that if even if we are taking the seeds or we are taking all this we have to take only the required required amount we can't exceed the required amount if we are taking too too much of this thing then that too is going to harm our liver anything else you would like to say or that's all or you want to say anything that's all so i i thank you thank you so much so much for your for your words and and i i wish you all the best and have a nice time god bless you okay okay that's it so we will see you know that fats are essential for maintaining the function of cell membranes as well as transporting and storing fat soluble vitamins including vitamin a vitamin d vitamin e and vitamin k so we need to take daily fats and fats are four types the first one is saturated fat saturated fats are usually solid at room temperature they contain maximum number of hydrogen atoms and saturated fats are found in many foods most of them come from animal source the animal source is meat and dairy products and uh, as far as meat is concerned it is poultry chicken all meat products including sausages pies butter ghee lard cheese creams uh, snacks cheese crackers pizza cheeseburger chocolate confectionery biscuits cakes and pastries all this contain a saturated fat and the main uh, plant source is palm oil and coconut oil so one should not forget that palm oil and coconut oil 
also contains the saturated fat. So much has been spoken about the coconut oil, but since this is a saturated fat, so it makes it controversial as far as consumption of coconut oil is concerned in people who are who are having atherosclerosis. So too much of saturated fat in the diet is unhealthy because it raises bad low density lipoprotein cholesterol. The saturated fat, among the saturated fats, what is interesting is about coconut oil. So it gives good high density lipoprotein cholesterol a boost, but I should tell you that this is a saturated fat and we have to avoid the saturated fat even if the coconut oil gives a boost to high density lipoprotein cholesterol. But why should we, why should we take, we got other oils which are better. So there is some controversy as far as consumption of, consumption of coconut oil is concerned. And the guidelines for consumption of saturated fat intake is that saturated fat should be taken less than 10% of daily calorie calories. So if you have got some normal requirement of da daily calories, among that you should not take more than 10% of saturated fat. It should be always less than 10% of saturated fat. Now the another class comes as unsaturated fats. The unsaturated fats are those fats that are liquid at room temperature. They are of two types. So unsaturated fats are of two types. Monounsaturated fats and polyunsaturated fats. Both monounsaturated fat and polyunsaturated fats help protect our health by maintaining levels of good high density lipoprotein cholesterol while reducing the bad fat that is low density lipoprotein cholesterol. So it means that we have to consume more of monounsaturated fat and polyunsaturated fat because it is good for health. It increases the it increases the levels of high density lipoproteins which is a which is a good fat and it lowers the bad fat that is low density lipoproteins and among the unsaturated fats we have as i said we have we have monounsaturated fats they are called monounsaturated because they lack one pair of hydrogen atoms and let me tell you that monounsaturated fats are found in olive oil, peanut oil, rapeseed oil, avocados, canola oil, and some nuts such as almonds, brazils, and peanuts. So, mon so monounsaturated fat, the usual source is the, the, is the vegetable oils as well as some nuts. And among the vegetable oils, the olive oil stands number one, which, can, which is uh, monounsaturated fat. The next, you can think of canola oils, you can think of avocados, all these contain monounsaturated fat. The next class is polyunsaturated fats. The, they are called polyunsaturated fats because they lack two or more pairs of hydrogen atoms. And there are two main types of polyunsaturated fats. And these are omega-3 and omega-6 fats. So polyunsaturated fats contain omega-3 and omega-6 fats. And some types of omega-3 and omega-6 fats cannot be synthesized or formed in the body. So they have to be taken from the, from the diet. And these omega-3 and omega-6 fats are good for health. They improve the 
lipid levels in the body and they they decrease the risk of atherosclerosis they decrease the risk of obesity diabetes because they are they are considered to be good fats compared to all other fats the omega 3 fats their source is mainly marine so when i say their source is marine so it is found in oily fish such as mackerel kipper herring trout sardines uh, salmon uh, fresh tuna walnuts and flax seeds so the omega 3 source is mainly marine that is mainly fish and among the fish you can think of trout fish salmon fish tuna fish and if you want, and some of the seeds also contain omega 3 fatty acids like walnuts like um, like almonds and then we have got the omega 6 fats their source is mainly vegetable and when i say vegetable oils it uh, it comes to my mind that vegetable oils are corn oil maize oil uh, sap and sunflower oil soybean oil and some nuts polyunsaturated fats that is omega 3 fats have the strongest evidence for health benefits including reducing the risk of heart disease then uh, another class of fat is trans fats so trans fats are found in foods and are list those are listed as hydrogenated or partially hydrogenated oils that we see on the labels in the markets in the shopping complexes these oils have got the labels showing telling us that they are partially hydrogenated oils so partially hydrogenated oil is not good for health since the it is considered to be the trans fat and we got a trans fat like uh, commercially baked foods such as cookies cakes uh, fried foods Uh, such as dough nuts french fries and trans fat is actually a garbage and should be avoided completely the people should not consume the trans fats they should not go to restaurants um, they should not take they should what i mean to say is that they should not take excess of such kind of food in restaurants and if 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 uh, uh, when they are, they are in the markets because such type of fats is not good for health they are definitely going to damage your health and it takes many years for these fats to accumulate in the body and then it will be very difficult to reverse the damaging effects of such fats so trans fats are unhealthy form of fat that increase your blood cholesterol that increase your low density lipoproteins which is a bad fat and uh, in addition trans fat reduces the amount of high density lipoproteins which was which was a good fat uh, these changes increase your risk for heart disease it is best to avoid trans fat as well as saturated fat because as i said both these types of fat increase high density lipoproteins and they 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 increase the, they reduce the high density lipoproteins and they increase the low density lipoproteins so what in one should not have increase in low density lipoproteins in the body so these fats increase such kind of uh, lipoproteins in our body so this fat is not recommended the american heart association recommends that you limit your daily intake of trans fat not more than 1% of daily requirement of calories so if you, if your daily requirement is uh, 2000 calories per diet then you can't take more than 2 grams of trans uh, trans fat daily or if you have got 1000 calories you are taking per day then you can't take more than 1 gram of trans fat daily in uk the government recommends that men shouldn't have more than 30 grams of saturated fat so 
people should not take more than 30 grams of saturated fat fat per day and women should not take more than 20 grams of saturated fat per day so just try to understand when i say saturated fat i didn't mean polyunsaturated fat it it doesn't mean monounsaturated fat it only means the saturated fat the saturated fat that solidifies at room temperature the the, the saturated fat whose source is animal source like ghee butter cheese all these things should not be taken and it should not be consumed more than 30 grams per day in men and more than 20 grams in women should not be consumed as it is going to damage your health and it is going to cause so many diseases like obesity like diabetes like stroke and uh, like heart attacks so what i am saying is that please don't take trans fat and don't take saturated fat then how much fat we should then take if, if you if, if you if i say like this then the question is how much fat should i take now if you are if in an adult let me talk about the adult man and the adult woman how much how much should be the how much should be the fat consumption per day the fat consumption per day should be according to the according to the work you are doing if you want to lose the weight or if your diet is hypocaloric diet the hypocaloric diet is usually uh, 1200 calories that means you want to reduce the weight you want to take less diet so if you want to take less diet for reducing the weight then you should not take you should not take more than 40 grams of fat and 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 among this you are you, you are required to take only 12 grams of saturated fat and 28 grams of poly or mono unsaturated fat so i am showing it here on the screen now if you, if you are a sedentary worker if you are sitting all most of the time is in the office or in the chair you are not doing much work you are not doing much exercise then you need to take around 1500 calorie diet and among the 1500 calorie diet you are supposed to take only 50 grams of total fat out of which 15 grams will be saturated fat so if you are a, if you are a, if you are a sedentary worker then uh, your total consumption of fat is 50 grams and uh, out of which you should take only the 15 grams of saturated fat and 35 grams of unsaturated fat and if you are moderately active you are doing some exercise and you are quite ambulant and you are having some walks moving here and there then you need to take around 2000 calorie diet and when you are taking 2000 calorie diet when you are taking good diet as since you are doing 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 you doing some exercise and work then you need to take total quantity of fat which is equivalent to 65 grams so out of this total fat how much should be taken saturated fat and how much should be taken mono or polyunsaturated fat so among this you should take uh, 20 grams of saturated fat and 45 grams of unsaturated fat and if you are, if you are doing heavily work if you are doing some you are going to gym you are doing doing exercise you are uh, going for uh, cycling then you need to take 2500 calorie diet uh, and out of which you have to take 85 grams of fat and out of which you have to take 20 grams of saturated fat and 60 grams of uh, 60 grams of unsaturated fat so for 1200 calorie diet you take saturated fat 12 grams and unsaturated fat 28 grams for 1500 calorie diet you take 15 grams saturated fat and 35 unsaturated fat and for 2000 calorie diet you take 20 gram saturated fat and 45 unsaturated fat
So the message here goes that we should take more of unsaturated fat, we should take more of poly and mono unsaturated fat than saturated fat. As I said that saturated fat, the main source is from the, the main source is animal source. That is, uh, that is about the requirement of the fat in, in, in adult man and in adult woman. And woman should actually, uh, woman should actually take less than 10% what men take. So what is the, what is the normal values for men? You slightly decrease that around 10% uh, less than you can give, you can give them, you can give them such quantity of fat, which of course is lesser than the requirement in adult men. Now, how should we measure the, the required fat per day? So question is, okay, I have told you that we should take uh, this much of saturated fat, this much of unsaturated fat, but how to measure it? The measurement is very simple. You just take one tablespoon of oil, for example, you take olive oil, and then the, this olive oil, one ta tablespoon, contains 14 grams of fat and it has got uh, calorie wa caloric value at 120, 120. So one tablespoon uh, of oil contains 14 grams of fat and 120 calories. So you take now any oil, if you take oil, uh, canola oil, you take sunflower oil, you take safe oil, if you take one tablespoon of oil, it will contain 14 grams of fat. So this formula is exactly the same and applies to other vegetable and animal oils such as canola, butter. However, let me tell you that olive oil is by far the most rich uh, in nutrients and we also must not forget that one gram of fat gives nine grams of uh, nine nine calories. One gram of fat gives nine calories, calories. And uh, let me also add here that extra virgin olive oil is one of the best edible oils with its pleasant flavor, antioxidant properties, and many health benefits. It also has one of the highest level of monounsaturated fatty acids among all the oils. Uh, which uh, studies have shown to help uh, lower the risk of heart diseases by improving related uh, risk factors and it is also rich in fat soluble vitamins like vitamin K and vitamin E. So the one of the best oils is the olive oil though it is uh, costly but if you ask me which oil uh, is preferred for as far as health is concerned, then I will say it is the olive oil. And next to olive oil is the other vegetable oil, is any vegetable oil like canola oil, like sunflower, like safflower, uh, any, any of the oil is, is then okay. But number one stands the olive oil. And don't forget that uh, coconut oil is a saturated fat though there is uh, evidence that it uh, increases the high density lipoproteins which is a good fat and it decreases the bad fat but since it is a saturated fat so I will re recommend better oil than this which is olive oil. And then we have got, uh, we have got, if we take the olive oil, let me tell you that olive oil contains 14 grams of fat, out of which saturated fat is 2.2 grams, and polyunsaturated fat is 1.8 grams, and monounsaturated fat is 10 grams. So you have got 10 grams and 2.2 grams of monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fat in the olive oil, and it has got 14 grams and 120 calories when you take one tablespoon of olive oil. So then you need, you need, you, you suppose if you are taking 85 grams of fat, that means how many, how many tablespoon 
of uh, oil you should uh, put in the cooking then it comes to it comes around uh, 6 to 7 tablespoonful of oil so that will give you the exact quantity you require per day or whatever is required but you have to calculate that and the nutritional value of olive oil truly surpasses that of any other fat and because fats are essential component of nutrition and an uh, integral part of uh, healthy diet so extra virgin olive oil is without question the healthiest of all the fats not only does it consist uh, mainly of healthy monounsaturated fats but it is the only fat that consists, contains high levels of healthy antioxidants known as polyphenols. So it contains healthy antioxidants uh, that are called as polyphenols. You will find them plenty in olive oil and that is good for the health. So according to the nutritional recommendations the one should not take the fat should not be consumed more than 30 percent of daily calorie calorie intake and uh, if uh, for example i have calculated that and i have shown that in the in the picture you should also let me also tell you that you should also limit your saturated fat intake to less than less than 10 percent of total calories or 15 grams for 2000 calorie diet or this will avoid the risk of heart diseases let me again let me here put a let me put a word on mediterranean diet let me speak about the mediterranean diet the researchers are investigating the possibility that a diet rich in monounsaturated fats such as olive oil may be protective against the development of coronary artery diseases. People who have high consumption of monounsaturated fats from olive oil, for example in Greece and Italy they take uh, monounsaturated fats like olive oil and they tend to have low rates of coronary artery disease regardless of their body weight. Studies have also shown that olive oil consumption may have a protective role on the breast, colon, lung and ovarian and skin cancers. Compounds specific to olive oil known as phenolics seem to possess free radical scavenging properties and so may be able to reduce oxidative damage to the DNA. So, we, we, we all know that people who take the Mediterranean diet, they live longer and they have got less risks of heart disease, they have got less risks of uh, the stroke and this is because they consume monounsaturated fats the, which is olive oil, they consume commonly olive oil there. So that is the reason why they don't have heart attacks irrespective of the obesity, irrespective of the weight gain. Let me also tell it here that uh, glitterthione is your liver's most powerful detoxifier and it is strongly anti-inflammatory. If you have a fatty liver, you need more of it and uh, n acetylcysteine cysteine is a precursor of glitterthione and is known to raise blood levels power, powerfully. Eating sulfur-rich foods also helps uh, with glutathione. Uh, examples include cabbage, broccoli and garlic. So people who have got liver disease should, uh, should consume more of broccoli, should consume more of cabbage and more of garlic since these foods contain glutathione which is good for your uh, liver and it will uh, give you anti-inflammatory anti and protect protection from um, so many things. Then we should also consume the antioxidants and antioxidants is in the fruits 
we should consume vitamin E, vitamin C because these two also lower the cholesterol in the body and uh, what I mean say that we should also consume vitamin E with uh, vitamin C and plus we should take cholesterol lowering medicine if we got uh, too much of fat in the body and uh, we should take almonds, the almonds have got good source of vitamin E and so are uh, liquid plant based oils as I said that we should consume mono unsaturated uh, fats and uh, another reason to cook with olive oil or canola oil. So this was all about the, about the fats and to summarize it again I have said that we should not take the saturated fat which has got an animal source uh, like saturated fats found in ghee, butter, cheese, burgers, pizza, uh, uh, confectionery, biscuits, cakes and we should not take the eat the trans fats the trans fats are also the garbage when we go to market we go to restaurants we find fat fried diet and such diets should not be should not be consumed and even if it is consumed it should be very very less in amount the best thing to take is mono unsaturated fats and among mono unsaturated fats we have got the olive oil which is rich in mono unsaturated fat which is rich in omega 3 fatty acids so we, this stands number one oil among all the fats or oils and if we don't afford to have the, have the uh, olive oil then we can take vegetable oils and among the vegetable oils is the canola oil, sunflower oil, the sap oil, the other vegetable oils and, uh, and, and, and we, should, uh, we should avoid uh, as I said taking taking the taking the taking the bad fats like both the saturated and unsaturated saturated and trans fats and we should also know how much fat to be consumed per day as i said that if you want to measure the measure the fat fat or if you want to measure the quantity of fat we should take per day then you take a tablespoon so I am telling you that tablespoon, the, if you put an oil in the tablespoon, it will contain 14 grams of fat. So accordingly, you, 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 you know how much tablespoon to be put in the cooking so that it comes to 60 grams or 80 grams or 85 grams. So in this range, you can take the fats per day and how much how much it contains the saturated fat and how much it contains the monosaturated, monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fat. So the I have shown you shown you in in the in the in the diagram I have shown you that how much unsaturated fat you should take and how much saturated fat you should take and why.